Hello everyone! This is a regular chart. It is not a pivot chart, and it is not linked directly to a table. But still, I can control this chart, and the formula to the spill range of which this chart is linked, with the table slicers. The chart shows the price development of the slicer selection as compared to the total, and can be used to analyze different scenarios with a single setup. In one of my previous videos, I showed you a formula that reacted to slicer selections. The idea was that the slicers controlled the table, and the formula performed calculations with visible cells only. But that formula did not spill. It was placed in a new table to which the chart was connected. So in this video, I'm going to show you a dynamic solution with a spilling formula and its dynamic chart. I will show you two ways how to do this. As a first step, I'm going to convert this data range to a table by clicking it and pressing Ctrl and T together. This is necessary for applying the slicers. Let's add the slicers. I will choose Outlet and Brand. and format them. The first method uses a helper column in the table. For the categories, I will type the following formula using function unique to return the unique entries in the year column. I also want the years to be sorted. To calculate the total average price, I will divide the sum of sales values by the sum of sales units. I will use the SUMIF function. The range that has to match the criteria is the year column in the table. The criteria are the years in the spill range. So I'm going to reference the cell H3. And to make the whole formula spill, add the hash sign and the range that has to be summed up are the sales values. Let me copy this formula. And divide it by the sum of the sales units. Now I will add the helper column to the table, call it visible, and apply a formula. In the formula, I will use the functions of total. This function has a whole list to choose from. The functions number 1 to 11 ignore rows hidden by a filter. And the numbers 101 to 111 ignore manually hidden rows as well. I will choose number 3, count A, to count the outlet. Please note that you have to choose a well-filled column. The function subtotal will return 1 if the cell is visible and 0 if it is hidden. If the cell is empty, subtotal will also return a 0. For example, let's select outlet 2 in the slicer, so that only this outlet is visible. If I unhide one of the rows, if you are quick enough, you will notice that the 0 is changing to 1. For the average price of the selection, I will use the function sum ifs because I will have two conditions, the year and the visibility. The sum ifs function will sum up the values The year column has to equal to the years in the spill range. And to make the whole formula spill, I will add the hash sign after cell H3, because cell H3 contains a formula with dynamic array functions that spill. So adding a hash sign after this reference will make my new formula spill as well. 
and the column visible has to equal 1. Let's copy this formula. And divide it by the summed up units. So right now, total and selection have the same prices. But as soon as I change the selection in the slicers, the numbers change. I would also like to have a dynamic chart. But to have a changing number of categories, I need to make it from a single spill range. And here I have three. I'm going to cut the second formula and wrap the first formula in the choose function. The choose function assigns values to index numbers. But if I place the index numbers in curly brackets separated by commas, then the choose function will deliver an array. The first value will be given back by the formula for the categories with the function unique, and the second value will be given back by the formula for the average total price. In this formula, I'll have to make an adjustment and change the reference to the spill range to the formula itself. Of course, I got the spill error because I still have to cut the third formula, which is in the way of the new spill range of the function choose. And this last formula will provide the third value for the choose function. Again, the reference to cell H3 with the hash sign has to be changed to the formula with the unique function. Let's format the numbers. And I'm selecting more rows in case I have more years later. And add a chart to the spill range. Format the chart. I'm going to speed up. If I select Outlet 4, Brand 4, or Brand 5, you will notice that these brands were not sold in this outlet in the year 2024. So for this selection, I don't want this year to be shown. To achieve this in the formula, I will apply the function filter inside the function unique. And filter the year column to include only visible rows, where column visible is equal to 1. and adjust the rest of the formula.
and the number of the years shown in the chart will depend on the slicer selection. The second approach does not need a helper column in the table, because the visibility calculation is performed in the formula itself. For the years, I'll again type the formula with the function unique, and the years have to be sorted. For the total average price, I will type a formula with the SUMIF function. The range that has to match the criteria is the year column. The criteria are in the spill range, which I'll reference by typing cell H3 followed by a hash sign. The sales values have to be summed up. And the sum of the values has to be divided by the sum of the units. For the average price of the selection, I'm going to substitute the helper column by using by row and lambda functions to apply the subtotal function row by row inside the formula. So for the values, I'm going to sum up the product of three arrays. The first is a condition, which is the correct year. The second is the visibility. Here I'll use the biro function, which is a helper function of the lambda function, and specify the sales value as the range to which the lambda function has to be applied, row by row. The lambda function is used for creating custom functions. The subtotal function will be applied through the lambda function. And the third array is the column of sales values. Copy the formula, paste it, and adjust it for sales units, so that summed up sales value is divided by the summed up sales units. The combination of by row, lambda, and subtotal will give back an array of 1s or zeros, depending if the row is visible or not. And this is a substitute for the helper column. But this formula is not spilling yet. So what happens if I add the hash sign? I will get an error. And this is because the years are not fed one by one into the formula, but are also considered as an array. To fix this, I'm going to wrap the whole formula in the biro and lambda functions again. This time the lambda function has to be applied row by row to the spill range starting in cell H3. So I'll type H3, followed by a hash sign. In the lambda function, I'll specify the parameter year. And this parameter has to be included instead of the cell H3 with its hash sign. in the formula.
and now the formula spills. Again, if I select outlet 4, brand 4 or brand 5, I have an extra year where these brands were not sold in this outlet. So for this year not to be shown, I need to adjust the formula and sell H3. First, let me copy the array created by Biro Lambda and Subtotal Functions. In the formula, in the cell H3, as a first step, I'm going to filter the year column to include only visible rows. This means that the entries in the array delivered by the Biro Lambda and Subtotal Functions have to equal 1. Then from the resulting array, the unique and sorted years will be derived. Now if I select outlet 4, brand 4 or brand 5, only 3 years are displayed. And as a last step, I need to pack all 3 formulas into one using the choose function to add the dynamic chart. So I'm going to cut the second formula. Wrap the choose function around the first formula in cell H3. The choose function assigns values to index numbers. I'm going to put the index numbers 1, 2, and 3 separated by commas into curly brackets. So 1, 2, and 3 because I have three formulas. And the choose function will deliver an array. The first value will be given back by the formula that was in cell H3. The second value will be given back by the formula that was in I3. I'm going to copy the formula that was in cell H3, and I will have to change all references to the spill range in cell H3 to the formula itself that was there to avoid the new formula referencing itself. Now I'll cut the third formula. and it is going to deliver the third value. And again, change the reference to cell H3 to the original formula that was in it. Just add the chart. And now we have a neat chart for analyzing the price development of different selections as compared to the total. If you like this video, please like and subscribe for more contents like this.